Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to look at you know, part two of this course. In part one, we looked at unsupervised learning and then we looked at a lot of different types of unsupervised learning including uh, representation learning, clustering and estimation for unsupervised learning. Now we are moving into a totally different paradigm of machine learning, perhaps a popular paradigm, more popular paradigm of machine learning called supervised learning. Right. So and uh, um, from this lecture onwards, uh, our focus is going to be primarily on supervised learning where we learn a lot of algorithms um, and, and we will understand why certain algorithms are better than others and so on. So what is supervised learning? Um, in supervised learning as uh, we have already seen in the introductory video, nevertheless I will again uh, uh, recap what is supervised learning. We have a bunch of data points x1 to xn where all data points are in Rd. So this is our usual um, unsupervised learning data set, right? So the same, exactly similar. So where um, you have features or uh, also called as attributes, um, statisticians would call it predictors, uh, predictor variables, whatnot. We'll stick to features uh, in this course. Um, in addition to this, you also have supervision um, in terms of what we are what we are going to call as uh, labels. Right. So, these y1 to yn corresponding to these x1 to xn um, are what we will call as labels. It is like saying you have some features and you also have some labels associated with it and this labels is the supervised supervision part. Right. So, this is the supervised, this is why it is called supervised learning. In addition to the, just the data points, you also are given some kind of supervision. So, what does it mean to say these labels are supervision? What, what values do these labels take? Um, well, there are different types of values this labels can take and depending on that, we will have different types of supervised learning problems. Um, if the labels take just two values, let us say in this, they come from the set plus 1 or minus 1 uh, or they come from the set 0 or 1, these are almost equivalent most of the times for us. Um, when this happens, th such a problem is called as a binary classification problem. Why? Because uh, there are two labels, the labels can take only two values, hence the term binary and uh, given a new feature which you have perhaps not seen in your data set, you would want to predict whether the label is plus 1 or minus 1, right. So, you want to classify the feature as falling in the plus 1 bucket or the minus 1 bucket, right. So, hence it is called as a classification problem because there are only two labels, we call it binary classification. Um, of course, uh, you do not have to necessarily have just two labels, um, but then uh, let us quickly look at an example for binary classification bef before motivating other types of classification. Um, so, let us say a simple example for this would be, you know, given an email, uh, classify whether it is spam or non-spam. Here, uh, you somehow convert your emails into some features. We will talk about how to, how, what are good ways to do this later. But for now, assume that every email somehow has been converted into a bunch of numbers which we are calling as features. Now, somebody comes and looks at these emails and tells us that some emails are spam, some emails are not spam. Now, this is our data set where the spam or not spam classification of these emails are the labels associated. They are the Y1 to Yn. And now given a new email, a spam classifier would like to say if the email is spam email or non-spam email automatically and so this is a binary classification problem. Um, as I said, you do not necessarily have to have just two classes or two labels. Um, you might have multiple classes. For example, um, there might be a problem where you might have 0 to 9 as your uh, possible um, classes. Now, what might be an example uh, where this happens? So, if this happens, it is called as multi-class classification, but um, I would uh, like you to think about an example where you might have <coughs> the labels <coughs> from the set 0 to 9. Well, um, pause and think about it and I will tell you the answer now. Um, one uh, simple example where this might be the labels is a digit classification problem. Right. So, you might have um, a written digit and then you would want to classify what is what is the digit that has been written, right. So, the, the image itself is your feature and then the label is the digit that has been written in this image. Of course, people write the same digit different ways um, and still we would want to recognize this as a learning system and so this is a multi-class classification problem. 
in general, you don't necessarily have to have only 0 to 9. This could be 0 to some k, but then a finite set of classes. An example is a digit classification problem where you have labels 0 to 9. Okay. Um, <coughs> another popular type of supervised learning problem is when the labels can belong to all real numbers. It can be any number between minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, when this happens, we call this problem as a regression problem. And this is perhaps um, one of the an earliest uh, supervised learning problem, uh, which has a lot of uh, statistical roots to it. Okay, so what might be an example of a regression problem? Where would you want to have features and then the labels as a real number? Again, you can pause and think about it. I'll give you one example. This is not the only example, uh, but this is nevertheless a standard example um, where you might have, let's say, as features, temperature, precipitation, uh, atmospheric pressure, and things like this. And then you would want to predict the amount of rainfall uh, that might occur on a particular day. Now, this amount of rainfall is a real number. It can take any value, right? So, 100.23 centimeters, for example, right? So, it can take any real number. So, we are going to call this a regression problem. Example, rainfall prediction. So, we will see that uh, each of these uh, types of supervised learning problems would need different types of algorithms. And I will try to justify why you would need different types of algorithms as we go along in this, uh, in this course. Um, but we will start with uh, the perhaps the classically um, the earliest um, uh, supervised learning problem, uh, which is regression. In this course, what we are going to do is talk a bit about regression for a couple of weeks. And then we will look at binary classification for, for a long time. Um, and then I will I'll kind of briefly talk about how you can use um, ideas in binary classification to also come up with models for algorithms for multi-class classification. It won't, multi class will not be a very predominant focus in this course, uh, but we will look at some ideas where you can use binary classification techniques to do multi-class classification. Nevertheless, the first thing that we are going to start with today is the problem of uh, supervised learning, specifically the problem of regression. <coughs> 